when we're talking about a physical church. When, when Jesus wrote letters in the book of Revelation, he said to the church of Ephesus, to the church in Corinth, to the church in Thyatira, he was not talking about a spiritual group of people. He was talking about a physical building, a group of people who met with a physical pastor. Why would he give you a physical pastor if there really wasn't such a thing as a physical church? There is a physical church. Now, now, and now hold on, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a statement here. I want you to get it. God doesn't do anything in the earth except through the church. Now, that's, good, that's quite a statement. You think, oh, wait a minute. Whoa. No, no, he doesn't. Now, every good thing that has ever happened to me, I got it. In church. Amen. Now, that, now, you know what? When I began to think about this, I thought, well, that's a wild statement. The, the crusade that went on in Atlanta, Georgia, came, was the Ernest Angel Crusade. He's a pastor. That church, that church put that crusade on. A church, it was a church outreach. I got saved in it. Then I went to a church in Doraville, Georgia, and I got filled with a Holy Ghost at church. Then a woman... I met at church, handing me Brother Hagin's books. I found my destiny when I walked into a local church. Now, let me make a statement to you. God will never do anything in your life of significance except through the church. But that, now, that takes us out of we're just, we're just a restaurant. Are you going to church today? Which church are you going to today? I don't know. What do you think about it? I think I'll go back to the beach. I don't know. You going to church? I think I'll go. Listen, Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell won't stand against it. If hell is beating you up, get in church. Get in church and get involved in church. Your destiny your destiny, who you are, all knowledge, not some, all knowledge. You remember I just got through making a statement, flesh and blood didn't show you this, Peter. You didn't learn it with your five physical senses. You learned it because God showed it to you. There is a supply of knowledge for you that you must have in order to succeed in life, and there is only one place you will find that knowledge. It will be in church. There is a wisdom of the world. There is a wisdom of God. The wisdom of God can only, 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 O-N-L-Y, only, come from God the Holy Ghost. He will give you wisdom or you won't have any. Do you remember pre-Jesus? Do you remember what you were doing? Do you remember how unintelligent you were acting? You were operating on all the wisdom you had. And you were dumb as a rock. Come on, I don't want y'all to stand up and give testimony, but... Now, the only people who don't understand that are people like Lisa and Melanie because they got saved in church. I mean, they, got, they came out of their mother's womb talking in tongues. So, you know, they, 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 you know, Lisa looked at me one time when we first got married. She goes, what's a new birth? I went, well, you wouldn't understand. You've been like saved all your forever. You know, you, you, you grew up in the church and, and you don't know. But the ones of us that didn't. We remember laying in somebody's front yard drunk as a coot and fog rolling in over our stoned head, couldn't move, had no money, spending it on drugs and calling it fun. You know, listen, didn't have a clue. In and out of jail, I can still smell a cop. I had a little radar in my in me. Woo, woo, 
woo, always looking for police. And I could get their vibes when I was around. There's a cop someplace. That didn't go away because I got saved. I can still. There's a policeman around here somewhere. That, that's, a good, that's been a good thing. Anyway. All right, now look at, look at this. I want you to think about this. The church is the only place you receive eternal life. Uh, I, that, 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 is, that is massive heavy. If, if you did away, this six acres of ground is the most important six acres in this city. Not the mayor's office. I know you're thinking, well, what about the government? Well, when the government, when our forefathers in America took a Bible and made the government out of the Bible, it worked. But the guys in there now, they don't have a Bible. Now, I'm going to make a good statement here. The church is the safest place on this earth. Somebody said, well, in all that's happening in the world today, where should we be? In the middle of the perfect will of God. God designed a place for you. This is not a good idea. It's a God idea. Now, that's a, that's a statement. Everything that's ever happened to you good came out of a church. Eternal life was because of a church. Divine guidance you remember, the, you remember the men that, that was on the road to Emmaus? Jesus had just risen from the dead, and they were headed out of Jerusalem. They walked with the Lord, but they weren't born again. Jesus meets them on the road. They didn't even know who he was. He talks to them for a few minutes, and after he talked to them, they turned around and went back into Jerusalem. You're going to go the wrong way in life. Without divine guidance. You were born with a destiny. And the only one that knows that destiny is God the Holy Ghost. And the only place you're going to get it is in a church service. When you walk in on a Sunday morning, there is a supply for you. Now, I'm, I'm not preaching this because I want you to feel condemned for the times you've missed. Well, we, we didn't come to church. Don't, don't do that to yourself or me. I'm not, I'm not running around condemning you because you missed it. But you did miss a supply. That's true. Amen. If you're missing a supply, you need to understand, I missed a very important meeting with God, and I now don't know what he said. A church, the Iglesia, now I'm going to tell you what it was designed Jesus said, I'm going to build my I'm going to build my church. The church during Jesus' day was a group of people who met in every city and ran the city. They met and they congregated to make laws and establish what will happen and what will not happen in this city. And that was called the church. It's not a New Testament word. It was a Roman word. Where people gathered in a city and said, we will not allow this and we will allow this. Thus, the statement, what you allow, what you forbid. When we are gathering and, and there is a, there's an anointing on you, there is a knowledge that God will give you because you're a Christian. But there is also a knowledge that you will only get through the ministry gifts. Now, that's quite a statement because people go, well, I know the Lord. I just, I know the Lord, and he speaks to me. I know the Lord too. But one day he said, go to Ramah. There were truths God told a man named Kenneth Hagin to teach me. Had I not gone, had I not done what he said, I would never have gotten my supply. 
There were truths I learned from him. There was truth I learned from Joyce Myers. There's truth I have learned from some of you in this room right here. There are things that God will not share with me. He has somebody in the body of Christ. That person is in your life to give you the supply of knowledge and wisdom that you need. And if you're not there, you're going to live and die and never have that supply and never fulfill what God called you to do. Thus, Satan hates the church. His number one ploy, get them out of church. 85% of everybody who's ever been born again has at one time been offended. You, there's a lot of Christians who aren't here. They're at home right now. They're sitting at home. Somebody has said they hurt my feelings. I don't know who they think they are treating me the way they treated me. Well, I'm the pastor, and I've been treated bad here too. <laughs> Brother Hagin said one time, he said he pastored a church, and he wanted to skin the deacon board. And when I got through skinning the deacon board, he wanted to skin the Sunday school superintendent. And then when he got through, he wanted to skin the worship leader. But then the love of God took over and decided to walk in love rather than skin them all and nail their hide to the wall. People are a pain. Hang around them a while. Then somebody's going to do you wrong. And I would love to tell you that I was perfect, but ask Lisa. Everybody wants a perfect preacher, and there aren't any. If he had a perfect one, he would use it, but he hadn't found one yet. We're flawed. We're not here to hear Daryl. I'm going to tell you something. If you think I'm coming up with all this, thank you, but you don't know how ignorant I am. But Lisa, it was funny being married to her because sometimes I would get a sermon. And I mean, it would, 30 minutes, I walk out and go, oh, that was good. And she goes, no, don't tell me that. Don't you tell me you got that 30 minutes. But now she's been experiencing the same thing. I think it was one morning the Lord woke up at 5 in the morning and said, start writing. And, and I'm going to tell you something. He's good. He, I'm, I will tell you this right now. He's good. And I, I mean, there's times, I, five in the morning, he wake me up and I'll go, hold it, Lord. And I'll go, whoo, that'll preach. And, and you know what? I come in and y'all go, Pastor, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> but he's not going to give me a job and not give me the stuff to do the job. Amen. So actually, you're, we're not here to hear Daryl. You're here to, you're here because you need to hear from God. You want to know what his plan for your life is, and you're not going to get it anywhere except in church. So you understand Satan is the divider. If he is bugging you right now, resist him. Yes. He'll flee from you. Yes. Go, hey, Satan, I already know the church is a bunch of knuckleheads, but, but he, God sent me there to help them. Yes. <laughs> and he did. I'm going to show you some scriptures in a minute to back it up. But all, all guidance, then there's divine strength. Samson had a divine strength. Something happens to us. If we're in the worship service, we're not just singing a few cute songs. The Bible says that when we worship God, they that wait upon the Lord, they that minister to the Lord, swap strength with God. Something happens inside of us when we're in church and we're worshiping God and, it, and it's not emotionalism. Do y'all ever watch the movies when they're trying to uh, get Hollywood movie stars to depict a Holy Ghost church? Have y'all ever? It's goofy. It's the, the Blues Brothers. My God, that's funny. Because the world does not understand what's happening when we're standing here going, I love you, Lord. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're just like, oh, glory, glory. Woo, glory, glory. Woo, 
glory to God, hallelujah. And they don't understand God is pumping strength into you that you're going to need for the next week, the next month. You are being downloaded and diffused with divine glory. Only place it happens is this church. Why do you think he makes this statement? Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is as you see the day approaching. What do you think you're going to need in these days? You're going to need guidance. You're going to need wisdom. You're going to need prosperity. You're going to need strength. And you're going to go, oh, 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 I got to go to church. Yep. It's, listen, it's, it, this is about you and God. You're going to meet with God. I know he's in your house. And I know he's in you. But there's also a divine corporate anointing. You don't get it anywhere else. Let me ask you a question. And everybody raise your hand if this is true. I've been preaching. And all of a sudden, you have these downloads going do, 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 of scripture. And, and I'm not even preaching on that. Listen, it, I know you enjoyed my sermon, but there are times I can see you're disconnecting, and it's a good thing because you're taking notes, and you're taking 10 notes to my one, and I go, whoa, God's talking to him right now. And there you're over there going, that is exactly what I needed to know. And I think you're, you're doing that because of my preaching. And I'm getting all excited because I think it's me. And you're back there going, no, it's God. And I go, yeah, I know, I know, it's God. And you're going, oh, no, this ain't even in your Woo! Yeah. Yes, there is a, thank you. There is a divine atmosphere that the body brings in. You don't have it all alone. You and I alone are incomplete. That's your hand. I, I, I was, who sent me the thing the other day? The little boy golfer. I was going to show it this morning. He was born without an arm. A little kid can, man, he's got this left swing. And he, it, wouldn't, how good would he be if he had both arms? I want both mine. I'm sure I can live without it. One arm. I, I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could live without legs. I'm sure, but, but I don't want to. You know, someone says, well, if you had to lose one, which one you I said, none. I, don't, I, I, like, I'm, I like all the parts. I want, I want all of the parts here because there are things, not only are you receiving, but you're bringing something to us we need. Every, I don't care who you are. This morning's worship, oh my gosh. Listen, <laughs> Lisa's not the only worship leader in this place. Tanya and Justin on the drum. Listen, if it was just a guitar, it would, oh, I'm sure we, it would be good. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. We could get a campfire and put it in the church. We could all get a marshmallow. But isn't it nicer when they all get up there? Oh, I like it. I like it when they all show up. And when you're gone, we know you're gone. You may think, i got to have a day off. Well, take a day off from work, but don't take a day off from God. And you know what? I understand that there are times people have to be gone. I, I, I know that. But, but we need to pray for someone, take your place, because when you're gone, there is a void there in the service. Really is. You are important to God. Oh, thank you for your enthusiasm. Now, number two, the kingdom of God is not falling apart. The world is. I'm going to say that again. I want you all to listen to something. There is a divine provision. Prosperity is supernatural. There is a supernatural wealth, and it only happens in church. Now, now let me make a statement to you. If you want to get rich, 
you've got to run around with rich people. There are men who have done more with money than Lisa and I. We hang around them. We listen when they talk. How did you get to where your offerings are $10,000 and mine and Lisa's are 1000 We want to know because we know you as ugly as I am. <laughs> and you don't have any more sense than I do. So you have tapped into something in God. There is a spiritual financial reservoir, and I've heard Dad Hagen talk about it. I heard Andrew talk about it. I heard um, Mark Hankins talk about it. And I heard Brother Hagen. And and y'all want to know something really weird? I'm just going to lay it out there. Did you know what dancing in the spirit does? Now, uh, your brain's going to go, prove that. It breaks poverty. Now, I know the world will go, y'all are crazy. Okay? Uh, Mark Hankin's dad pastored a church in Texas, a city of 3,000 people. You know how many people he had in his church? 3,000. And, you know, people said, how'd you do that? He got a hold of Brother Hagin's book, Faith and the Authority of the Believer. But he said anytime they had a financial need, the Lord would tell him, dance the money in. Now, you know, you, you want to, and, and you say, I think you're crazy. Well, right after he did that, someone wrote him a check for a million dollars. In a town, in a, in a Texas hick town. If God can do that in Texas, uh, just imagine what he could do in Orlando. Now, if that's true, and, and, and Goodwin, um, well, I don't know, Paul Goodwin, I don't know his name. He said the same thing. He said the Holy Ghost said, when, you're, when, you need, when your money is low, dance it in. Now, Smith Wigglesworth said the same thing. Now, now after a while, see, you want to run around with people who, who can believe for one million dollars. Now, if if you ha- if you're not there, you, you might want to listen. This is good supply for you this morning. I'm giving you divine wisdom. I'm not giving you natural stuff. I'm not giving you uh, six steps to take all of your money and make wealth with it. I'm giving you how to hold on to your money and get God to give you some that you didn't just bring it in. God, bring it in. There, see, there is a supply for the church, but there is a supernatural wisdom that goes on in the church. It's not in the world. You got to make up your mind you're going to be here and open up your Bible and believe it. When they hung around Jesus, they got money out of fish's mouth, food out of nothing, wine from water. And he's still the same. There is a supply. And you don't see the kingdom of God in in the millennial reign, the whole world will live like this. You and I can start now. I want to do a whole series for one month on kingdom living and talk about prosperity. There that some of you folks need I'm tired of you being broke as you're tired of you being broke. You don't have to be broke. Now, you have to get over somebody preaching it while your head is flipping. What's his motive? What's he after? Well, not your money because I saw you rolling on the floor and no money fell out of your pocket, so we know you ain't got none. You're just hanging around Bernie's brothers too long right there. No, I met a girl from England one time, and she looked at this guy who was flirting with her, and she said, what's your motive? <laughs> I thought, that's cool. <laughs> Don't y'all love different la- people talking? It's just, 
I try to imitate people all the time. I, I guess I don't do too good, but I entertain myself. Sometimes if I look at your faces, I go, I better do something to make myself laugh right now, really. <laughs> No, and the Lord started showing me this. I went, wow, I I never even really gave this a lot of thought. This is powerful. How are we doing for time? Oh, my gosh. We're out of time. Let me say this before we close, and I, I won't get into it today. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not stand against it. Now, let's stop for a minute. Didn't, didn't Satan lock Peter up? Yes. Did it do any good? No. No? Didn't Satan lock Paul up? Yes. Did it do any good? No. no. Didn't Satan try to burn Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Yes. Did it do any good? No. Didn't Satan try to chunk Daniel into a lion's den? Did it do any good? No. Now let me tell you something. The gates, Satan has decided that some of y'all need to get locked down. He's built gates, gates and said, you'll never have your money. You'll never get your healing. You'll never, you'll never. I got you in a gate. I got you in a cage and you can't unlock it. Jesus said, I will build my church. We're talking about a corporate body of people. And the gates of hell will not stand against my church. You're not going to lock the gospel down. You're not going to stop the power of God. You're not going to stop our prosperity. You're not going to stop our healing. You're not going to stop us from from succeeding. The gates of hell. No, I'm in the church. This church, the corporate anointing will break the gates of hell. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Now see, what you're doing right now, you, you don't understand this, but in the spirit realm, All of your enthusiasm, Satan cannot stand in that presence. You are shaking hell right now. You're shaking hell. Every gate, every weapon formed against you, right now you're going, no, hallelujah, praise the Lord. You're literally shaking the gates. Paul and Silas were in jail. They sang praises. What do you think you're doing when you come? Yeah, you're shaking, you're shaking gates where Satan has said, you'll never get that. You'll never go any further. You'll never get your healing. You'll, you'll die. You will not live. And you walk in and go, I'm going to church. By God, I'm going to go to church. There is an anointing. I wish I could explain this in the, in the natural. There is, a fit, there, there is an anointing on you because you're a born-again Christian. Thank God for it. There is a greater corporate anointing than that. When, 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 the, when the body meets, the, 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 the ability for God to work intensifies. One will put 1,000 to flight. Two will put 10,000. Just look around the room and think, my God, we're powerful. Yes. Look at the power in this room right yes. this minute. Now, do you understand why Satan hates you getting up this morning and going, I think we're going to go to church. I'm, I'm not done. I'm, I'm so far out of time, and I got two pages, and I'm still on page one. That's all right. I have another Sunday. I want you all to do something, and I, I, just, I just had this in my heart to do it before we left today. I want you, I want you to quote this scripture. Oh, we're going to quote it together. And then I want you to stand up, and I want you to start talking to some gates. I I will build my church. My church, Jesus said, will be the most victorious, powerful race of people that have ever walked on this planet. And hell can't stop them. Oh, 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 he'll try. Oh, he'll try. Now, that's, that's, that's something you need to meditate on for the next week and month. I can't be stopped. You, you can't build a cage or a system on this earth. The, the devil is trying by the economy to put you in a cage. 
Well, you might as well just get down and you're going to go through hard times. I ain't getting in your cage. I know, I know this sounds radical. No, no cage, Satan. No cage, no. It's a gate. It's a gate. It's only a gate. He don't have much going for him. It's just a gate. Next week, we'll get into the fact that he handed you the keys to the gate. I can't wait till next week. We need to hurry up and get there. Now, 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 can I take another 30? if If I looked at Josh Brown and said, Josh, grab some men and go move my truck. And Josh would probably say something stupid like, well, where's your keys? And I'd go, just move it. Just move the truck. I'm not giving you the keys. Just move it. That, that would really not be fair. It would really be stupid. And Josh is going to go, well, you want me to get a tow truck and just drag it down the road? What are you going to do with this thing? You, Jesus really didn't ask you to do all. See, this thing of, of, of taking the world, this thing of, of overcoming, it's, it's a big deal. You're, if There's a lot of power. But you, but you need, if you have the keys, it's nothing to, you just crank, crank it, it go. That's right. The church has been trying to operate without keys. Right. You, you, see, you see people pushing their cars down the road. Oh, what a hard life this is. <laughs> crank it. <laughs> we don't believe in that. There's a reason the engine is in there. And there is something that will crank it. It's called. There's a lot of horsepower right here. Called Holy Ghost power. (laughs) The next time you see some Christian pushing their bus down the road. And they get in the bus and sing Kumbaya, and they go, we don't believe in cranking buses anymore. <laughs> and you see them walking to the grocery stores, and they have a car. You go, help them. That's those prosperity people. They believe in driving their cars. How dare they take something so holy and use it for nominal things like going to Winn-Dixie? How dare them? That was done away with with the apostles. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Stand up on your feet. We got some things to deal with this morning. We got to tell the devil where to go right now. Y'all ready? Amen. Amen. Say, Jesus said, Jesus said I'll, build I'll build my church. He's talking about me. Talking about and the gates of hell, gates of hell will, not will not stand against it. Against Again, against he is talking about me. About now, devil, now, you're not going to create a gate. That's going to stop us. We're the church. We're together. We're in agreement. My best days are ahead. I come against poverty. The gate of poverty. Open up. Riches open. In Jesus' name. I come against sickness. Open that gate. I'm going through. This is my inheritance. You will not stop me. I'm the church. I say so, so. in Jesus' name, name. amen. This is what they used to do in Rome. They would gather in the theaters, someone would get up and talk about the issues, and they would say, yes or no. And if they said no, no was no. But it only happened at church. All laws are determined by the body. What do you allow? I don't allow that. That's powerful. We're going to do this some more. We're going to, oh, I'm telling you what, I'm excited about this. We're we're not anywhere near done. Anyway, Lisa, take over. I I, I could just, I'm going to start next week's sermon if I keep going. Praise the Lord. Y'all can remember.